labor, and the expression of worth. Driver, step out of your vehicle. I remember one time he, he pulled me over and he knew a police no, officer. No, I wouldn't. No you, uh, way. Mm -hmm, yeah, you're like, whoop, whoop, whoop. But see. Hi, my name's Trav and I've been traveling. To the ones whose brokenness demanded attention, may you sing out the dreams of the people. This is my brother. He took his own life about two and a half years ago. I'm trying to have the conversation now that him and I couldn't have. Lost more than found. Oh man, you got gears? Whoa. Okay, so you got the exhaust pipe coming down here, and we got the clutch on the left, just like a motorcycle, right? And you got these, these, it's like a 10 speed handlebars turned upside down. This thing has just been reworked. Yeah. So interesting. We are all playing our parts in this great composition. That's me, the little guy there, traveling Trav. My dad is filming, the guy behind the camera, and that's my mom right there on the steps. Watch out, little Trav. That concrete is hard. <laughs> I was deeply influenced by the children's television on PBS. Fred Rogers, he wanted us to all know that we are lovable and capable of loving. It's okay to be curious, to ask questions. Empathy and generosity of spirit are great strengths. My brother, just before he died, he was trying to open up a conversation with me. He wanted to talk about shame. He tried to approach it several times with me, but he could only back away. In the face of our loss, many of us have now made a renewed commitment to life. As an act of conscious resistance to empire, we are aligning our labor with our innate worth. Let's frame ourselves here. Hello. All right, let's do it. We are the species who now attempts to re-enter nature. And in our attempts to reconnect with nature, we bring our innate insanity into nature and we somehow destroy those places. We leave our cans and we torment the wildlife. And so some of us are employed to regulate what we call our so-called recreation areas by making signs to help those of us who have lost any innate respect that our species might have once had for what we call nature. And strangely enough, we are nature. In fact, we are the species who somehow has come to believe itself to be separate from nature. And the species who created a god somehow in our own image, from whom we also believe ourselves to be separate from. And this is one way that we might describe our great need for all these signs that we see everywhere we go. External instructions, our desperate attempt to remind one another of our apparent lack of innate respect. All our signs, symbols of our sad attempts to self-regulate. Yes. We are the species who created nuclear weapons to keep the peace. We domesticated dogs down to chihuahuas so we could make signs reminding us to be sure to put their shit in a plastic bag to feed our landfills. Oh God, this has all been said before. What's the use? Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition, I heard someone say. Has this experiment yet come to an end? How do we hold ourselves rightly now after George Carlin has already said it all? Sharp criticism can't save us any more than white phosphorus bombs could. God help us. What is responsibility? What is the life well lived? For those of us without a heart to contribute, for those of us who we now call disabled and mentally ill, those who are still walking upright, yet find themselves unable to consistently perform for the wage that buys the safety of even the most meager of shelters. The monetary system, one of our greatest illusory creations of all time, commerce, trade, what is value? What is worth? Do we know now? Do, are we able to discern what has true value and what has worth 
innate worth, innate value? Does it exist? Recreation areas. Dear God, signs, signs, everywhere signs. External control systems for a people who have somehow lost our connection to our inner compass. Most anyone can talk about responsibility. A responsible person goes to work. A responsible person cares for themselves. A responsible person provides for their family. Okay. Again, I ask, what is responsibility? Once we've exhausted ourselves in the raising of our family, once you've been tossed aside by society, and by society I mean friends and family, once you are feared by those who have earned their safety, who have their shelter, once you've been identified as sick and disabled, diseased, once hardly anyone can compensate you anymore for who you really are. Obviously, I reveal to you, dear reader, my disappointment, my pain. I must be so careful as I pour myself out like this in pencil. Where does my help come from? I will turn my attention to the one we call eternal. After all the study and after all the analysis, I will turn my heart toward the one, the one love. After having educated myself sufficiently to describe the human condition in a number of ways, now I pray, I trust. I have given myself fully in my participation, and that full participation, I confess, must have looked quite ridiculous at times, and that participation was surely quite inadequate in the eyes of many including those who I claim to love the most. If they must see me as a failure, may my life serve as some kind of teaching tool. And may I accept myself fully as I walk through each stage of development. And may these words fail to discourage anyone who is at an earlier stage of development than me. Me, Trav this particular manifestation of consciousness that I call I, this bipedal word monkey, descendant of those who invented shoes and obesity and the Cocker Spaniel, artificial selection, some call it, our capacity to choose the genes that we prefer to express in our so-called lower animal friends. Now, where was I? Oh yes, trusting in God. I was trusting in God. <laughs> Speaking of God, we also invented the piano, and in that sonic tool I certainly find great hope. And the guitar, too, we invented, which goes quite well with our ability to summon fire. Yes, campfires and guitars. Pianos, guitars, and campfires. Thank God. <laughs> what do I mean when I speak of trusting God? You might ask me if you really cared, or you might ask me the same question in a different tone if you wanted to mock or belittle me. You might add, how can someone who knows as much as you do about the human condition, yes, just how can you possibly believe in God? And that question might present itself to us in varying tones and qualities. And if you were to ask me that question, my response might return to you also along a range of possible word choices and expressions of frequency. I might start by saying, First of all, I think Nietzsche was correct in saying that God is dead. <laughs> and you might say, hold on, I thought you said you believed in God. And to that, I would most likely respond by saying, I never said that I believe in God. Although sometimes I do refer to myself as a true believer. <laughs> and all of this, this back and forth might continue in some fashion until I felt fully confident that I described to you how inadequate any set of words that I could choose would be to uh, define the ineffable. Uh, the ineffable just can't be effed. <laughs> the, the Tao that can be named is not the Tao at all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> to which you might say, the Tao? I thought you were talking about God. And I might just say, yes, and. Or I uh, might say, and also. Or I might just give you a hug if you're a hugger. Or I might just laugh out loud. <laughs> I might just laugh out loud as if I, I just heard the best joke ever. And you might wonder, 
is this guy crazy? And the answer to that question is a resounding yes, because all true believers are absolutely nuts. There's no doubt about it. Don't believe anyone who tells you otherwise. <laughs> Come on. Oh my God. Oh. I'm sitting in my little white van right now as I write with a number two pencil. I'm staring out at the Pacific Ocean at one of those recreation sites to which all the signs point to as the appropriate place to enjoy nature. <laughs> After we've read all the signs and we have been fully informed about all the things that we can and cannot do, we are free to go trample over the same ground that all the other recreators who came before us also trampled on. <laughs> If signs and legislation and men with guns and submarines were going to save us, they would have by now. When I say that, <laughs> when I say that I must put my trust in God, I'm saying that the human condition looks absolutely impossible to me. But I've seen enough miracles in my own life that I can still choose to believe in the impossible. And even when things look dark and angry and hopeless, I'm going to turn my heart to love. I'm going to keep trusting. And I hope that you can hear my love for the one in all these words. I know this isn't your traditional spiritual pep talk, but I'm trusting that you can hear something in between my words that will help you to connect with your faith too, your love. If you don't want to call it faith, if you, whatever words you need to use. This trust of which I speak although it is a choice, is impossible to muster. This trust is the experience that is beyond the reach of all words. This trust of which I speak comes from within us and is born of a thousand deaths and a thousand and one rebirths, resurrections. It's like a seed that goes into the ground. It dies and then roots begin to push down deep into the soil. Roots which draw sustenance from all that lived before. Life, that impossible biogenesis. Now the baby tree pushes upward and reaches into the sky. Green leaves begin to photosynthesize, spinning light into carbs. Light, both particle and wave, I've heard, just like you. You are both particle and wave, individuated photon and part of a frequency, a wave, not separate from all the other particles. Okay, it's time for me to head north, up the coast of Oregon now. Travelin' Travs, Transrational Blues, do not fear. <laughs>